Meredith, if you were to guess, who do you think in here, who is a legal driver, would be like the worst driver? I just explain Sam's like the, the, the least safe driver. Oh, no, you think you're safe. So what would your evidence be? I learned it. Why is that bad? You only took it once. Not that you're a poor driver, but comparatively speaking, he took it five times more. So, okay. Now, again, we've got tool model, tool and model here going. What's going to happen on your quiz, and I'll probably give you about two of them. Um, we'll wait and see. One or two. Uh, but we'll have something like this. And we did one yesterday where you have it broken down into three statements. You'll have the three statements. What are you going to have to identify with your three statements? Which one is going to be the evidence? Which one is going to be the warrant? Which one is going to be the claim? Um, of those three, and let's say we're going with the American student test scores are dropping, number of credits in math and science, um, should be increased. North Hills is representative of the average population. Of those three, evidence, warrant, claim, which one do you think would be a good place to start? Because if you're going to identify one first, where do you want to go? Um, well, but like evidence, claim, warrant, which one do you want to start with? Which one do you want to seek? Like a, like anything like a form of evidence? Or like a um, I'm throwing out a possibility at least. I'd say claim. I'd say go for the claim. What's the argument? Now, it doesn't mean you're always going to be able to see it right away. However, again, with the North Hills ones, there shouldn't be a word that is cueing you into this being the claim. Just like we had last time, should. We always have should in the claim? Absolutely not. But we know for here, um, the number of credits in math and science needed for high school graduation at North Hills should be increased. So here is judgment value claim going on. You need more math. You need more science instead of your... Need three credits for math. Three credits for science? Yep, let's go to five. You gotta double up some year. I know, Kira, you're not gonna like that, but it's gotta happen. So, that's our claim. You should take more math science. What would our evidence be for math and science as to why there should be more credits? Okay, well, why do you think we need to take more math? Well, it seems like our test scores are dropping yearly in math and science. So therefore, at North Hills, we should end up taking more. Well, why should North Hills be taking it if, if we're talking about American test scores? We're not talking just about North Hills test scores. Well, that's where our warrant comes in, which is going to be our last one. North Hills is a representative population of, of you know, American high school students. So about half of your quiz is going to be statements like these, where you're going to be identifying data, claims, warrants. Data, claims, warrants. And then you'll slide over into some multiple. I mean, and, and, and for our purposes, yes, it definitely will be. Um, but when, when you're having regular conversation and, and whatnot, it, it's at best probably 50-50 that, that it would be stated. Um, the next study on Ms. Barry? Okay. So you're going to do your makeup work with this period. We just had a conversation. We didn't explain why fifth period. Well, I had a study hall. Study hall would be a better time to make it up than during math class, after school, things like that. So for if, if, the, if you and the person are on the same wavelength, it's going to be implicit. If, um, if you're having a political conversation with someone that you agree with, you probably don't get into a whole lot of war because you already have those viewpoints. If you're getting into a political conversation with someone on the opposite end of the spectrum, then they're going to be looking for warrants and all of those kinds of things to see how exactly what they would have to say. Um, but if it's, a, if it's a typical concept that people are aware of, it probably ends up being implicit. Kind of like the whole thing we talked about, like teacher relationship. Or, you know, hey, you should carry an umbrella tomorrow. It might rain. Well, if you have the umbrella and you're supposed to be a teacher, then you should follow that or you should carry the umbrella. You don't have to go in that direction. So. But certainly for what we would be doing, you know, with you identifying them, yeah, you, you would want to have those things available. I got to skip these slides. Maddie has a spar debate. 
I gave you a claim. I have to skip these slides. What's my evidence? Maddie has a sparring me. Warrants don't need to mention because we understand, hey, we don't have time up there. We're going to come back here and, you know, crush somebody. Would that be in there? We're going to skip these so we definitely have enough time to know for Maddie to get this week to the Lord. And that becomes great. In, in theory, well, no, not necessarily. Um, when, when you, uh, what are you doing in an introduction of an essay? That's your claim. And then your paragraphs end up being your evidence. And then the explanation within those paragraphs is going to be your warrant. So you'll certainly go back to your claim multiple times. But if, if, you're, if you're giving a speech, you know, if you're writing something, you're probably going to mention your claim right off the bat. Then you're going to give evidence of it. Unless you, tomorrow, we'll take a look at the loss of the fallacy and see what that left hand is. You know, we give the wrong time. And then we have to see what that left hand is. But no, you'll. You'll, you'll come up with your claim more so. Um, Schoolman would say, yes, your claim should be last, but you should take a look at all this evidence that's out there, and then you can come to a, you know, to a good conclusion on a scientific method test. But more often, you know, more often than not, you're going to be saying that's your evidence. Can your claim be more than one claim at once? Probably not. Have your reasoning yeah, we do this because of this. Like that would be. I mean, once you say because, now you're kind of getting into warrants and evidence and all that. Kind of, you kind of get a little bit more here too. So we have the simple model: data, evidence, ground, or data, evidence, grounds, and again, all those things interchangeable, leading into the claim with the warrant. Now we're adding some stuff. So with the warrant, we have modality and rebuttal. Follow the bouncing letters. And then we also have backing. This might be what you're kind of getting into, Sam. I don't know. We'll see with the backing. Any educated guesses on what any of those things mean? Notice, though, it's linked to the warrant, you know, not to the evidence. So it's going to be connected to the warrant. And that's partially yes, and that's what kind of makes rebuttal difficult because it kind of has double meaning to it. So we talk about rebuttals where you do the counter argument, so you have to do that, that kind of thing. Rebuttals can also get tweaked a little bit because it's you presenting an argument, still you're not worried about the point. But that counter claim thing is still going to be in there. So you're definitely going down the right track with it. Here's what backing is. Um, backing is reasoning that allows that leap to take place. So basically, what does it end up doing? It supports the claim. So, Brandon, when you said, you know, kind of backing up your evidence, you're absolutely right. But it's kind of further supporting that your warrant, that your reasoning is making sense. American family should donate. The average American family should donate. $20,000. What's the evidence for that? Well, the average family makes 50000 so you only need 30000 to live on. Can, without knowing what the answer would be, you know, necessarily, can you think of what additional backing for that warrant would be as to why you only need 30000 as an average family? Because you spend money. So, you know, yeah, food, water, clothing, shelter, transportation, I forget what some of your other kind of basic necessities. So if you had a breakdown as to this is what the average mortgage payment would be, this is what an average food payment would be, this is what you put the clothes upon, and that stuff equals $29,914, you're supporting your warrant that you only need $30,000 to, to live on. Um, if you were uh, to donate $200, um, is going to help a, a two-year-old become a six-year-old and maybe be healthy. You know, additional warrants would kind of be along the lines of, and we want children to be healthy and happy. We don't want to see other people perish and all that kind of stuff and, and whatnot. So it's kind of like additional layers that are going to go on with that warrant. 
I have a fever. I shouldn't go to school today. Why shouldn't you go to school today? Well, we said a fever is indicative of being ill, sick. And then we kind of start to go in the back end. If sick Grant comes into school today, then what could happen? Maybe Grant could be sick, and then Meredith could be sick, and she might fail the fiber test, have a couple additional fibers, and she could be in the back of the exam. Okay? So we give more reasons and more ways as to how those kind of illnesses affect me, how, how that illness coming into the building could cause problems. I'm sorry? Well, and that sometimes it gets even worse with the loss of spouse. Like supporting the necessity for it, yeah, and, and, and kind of dependent upon how it's going to be done. Like part of that could end up being part of your evidence too. Um, we should donate money, you know, to help poor people. There are, I don't know what that number is, you know, but yeah, like you know, 2.3 million poor uh, children in across the world. Two hundred dollars would help. You could certainly have multiple types of evidence, and then you could have multiple warrants for the same. Part of that evidence too. So, uh, yeah, it, 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 if, if it's something that is probably going to be more stat or a statistic based, number based, chances are evidence. If it's something that is helping you comprehend why that statistic or that piece of evidence or the next fact that you're pointing, that's when that whole problem comes in. So, why this ends up being so important, and Maddie talks about this because we get kind of statistical all the time, um, it does become important to us from a statistics standpoint because we want to make sure that the audience understands exactly what we're talking because there could be a lot of preconceived notions that certain people have about what we think that means. Um, certainly moral values, all of those kinds of things that we don't necessarily want to, to rely upon. And that's what we're trying to get through here. But keep in mind, you're, you're not going to have like one piece of evidence and therefore this one warrant that's going to link factually to a claim. If you do, you probably don't have enough of an argument to keep up with that claim. So there will be multiple parts to it. But the idea of the backing is you're going into further detail. So like, you know, when you would write an essay or anyone writes an essay for me, what do I tend to put a lot of times in the margins? How so? How come? Why? Really, it's actually kind of asking for more backing. So like on your Siddhartha TW, I can go, you know, LA, provide some backing for your warrant. And then you'll be like, ah, cross-contamination, don't do that. Rebuttals and modality. Modality is your degree of certainty. Probably, maybe it's a little wishy-washy. Um, most likely, apparently, possibly. What would be some ones I would want to avoid in dealing with modality? Because that's going to sound pretty wishy-washy, almost kind of like 50-50. Maybe if I'm taking a negative, I could end up going with it. But yeah, you're, you're probably right. Yeah, I would agree. It, it certainly could work in some circumstances. Can you think of any that are too strong? No. Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely. With, you know, um, without no question, no doubt. <laughs> Not really modality, that was just a claim. <laughs> you say I'm usually a god, you know, so perhaps a, a, a little bit, actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, um, conversely, never, you know, this never happens, and if that ends up being your argument, all Adrian has to do is, well, there was this one exception. Oh, yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be statistics or anything, but for modality, you're given a degree of certainty. We're talking about like essays and, and all that kind of 
stuff. Um, some people would like to regard it as like you're going, and this proves, you know, that so and so is right and so and so is wrong. Well, it's not that you can't do it, but that ends up being a pretty strong, you know, it's, 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 it's always the way it is. If you were to go, this proves it beyond a shadow of a doubt, as opposed to this supports, see that whole thing about love and truth right now, too. Yeah, yeah. You know, if, if this supports the idea, um, that's that, that can be a little bit of a safer bet. Because if you open yourself up to some rebuttals or exceptions to the claim, um, you, you you know that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt doesn't give you a whole lot of leeway. You want to be assertive, and you certainly want to back up your point. And here's why, like the rebuttals kind of come in, um, and this I think will kind of get to, to your point, Ellie. Uh, Ulrich was saying rebuttal is kind of like counter arguments. In some ways, the rebuttal within the claim is actually you identifying that there are some exceptions, that it's not always going to be the case. You will get an A on your quiz on Friday, unless you fail to do it. Okay. And then it most likely get a lower score. Right? Like I said, most likely. So if there's an exception where, no, you should be okay. But, unless, however, if you do this, I'm acknowledging that there are some intervening factors that could take place. You know, so a, a long-distance relationship isn't doomed to fail unless you're not going to see the person for like 24 months, then that one very well could be doomed to fail because it has to do with some you know, kind of contact. So for you doing this introspection to the claim, is it necessarily a spot of weakness on your part or anything? Going, there, there are some exceptions to these you know, that, that are going to be taking place. Uh, you should win your next cross game. Unless you sprain your ankle or something happens and whatnot. Intervening factors that, that you're not necessarily anticipating that, that could take place. Uh, and so those are things that, that can be nice for you to acknowledge, you know, right off the bat. Even if you're playing, here's my thing. Unless, you know, and in some ways that could even kind of diminish some of what the opponent's going to do. Because if they're going to attack all this Said, well, but these are could be exceptions to it. The claim will lessen the severity of, of their attack and the things that could be happening. So, if you're going to go, this proves, you know, all the time, unless this is a horrible person who, you know, isn't going to like someone, then you know, you're acknowledging that they could be. So, if you went more often than not to support so and so's claim, that's probably a safer bet to go. Now, if, if you're in like that you know, dead fast argument with someone, no, oh, this proves that I'm right. Then you could you could certainly make that bet. Possibly you still say I'd say most this this um, more often than not this supports or um, more often yeah like more often than not typically um, and you could simply go this supports his claim you know to be valid is you acknowledging that yeah I believe that this person could be right more often than not but you could even kind of do a counter argument where you're just acknowledging now here are some exceptions to which kind of things are happening right now. If, you know, you're the Spears or the Petmeyer, you might need more than $30,000 to survive because that's a lot of rocks and a lot of shoes and things you need to stop for and a lot of gallons of milk. You know, so. But I got the biggest all score. Um, so, you know, those are, those are exceptions. Now, you doing a rebuttal, you know, for yourself doesn't mean you're trying to help the other side. It just simply means you are trying to acknowledge that, hey, there, there could be an exception to it. This will definitely not be the case in 2020, as the pirates will stink. But, oh well. I was going to say, do you have a Marte jersey? Well, well, they're going to be on sale now, so you can go get your uh, Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell, Marte jersey and probably spend like $4 and donate the rest of the money to the poor. And still, you know, show your support. So, again, this would be a terrible argument to make, but I'm going to kind of work backwards. Claim the Pirates will make the playoffs this year. The Pirates will probably make the playoffs, so there's that modality coming in, although we could still shake our head no. Um, Pirates could have one of the better starting pitching staffs in the National League. That's kind of fun. 
but that's my grounds. Here's my evidence. So that's going to lead to my claim. Experts agree that good starting pitching is critical to making the playoffs. So they could have one of the better starting uh, pitching staffs, and experts agree that this is important, so that's going to go help my claim. However, and that's a clear indication that you could have yeah, that didn't work. Um, some kind of rebuttal coming. Injuries can quickly debilitate a major league pitching staff or lack of money or lack of talent or simply trading everyone away. But we'll just keep it at injuries. So playoff teams traditionally are in the top 10 in team ERA and opponent batting average. This ends up being my backing because I had evidence for a better starting pitching staff. Now I'm giving specific uh, categories that would work for that backing. Anyone see what the modality is in this statement? Playoff teams traditionally are in the top 10 in team ERA and opponent batting average. Traditionally. So it's not all the time, but more often than not, traditionally. And that's why the Pirates will probably make the playoffs this year. Untrue statement. Okay. So as an argument becomes more extended, you tend to have the modality, the rebuttal, the backing. But what you're going to be doing for Friday will be a quick interview with Dad and Mike. Okay. Do you want to take it on? Yeah. <laughs> 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 three and one. Three and one. Mansfield has tried to test like five times. 